Just like Michelangelo into the blue on heavenly wings. Cargo hand bones don't take off no smoke, no mirror, no strings. I can't take off these dark shades. I can only say how it's too beautiful. Our town, our town on TV, our town. Upside down, hanging out of an airplane. Welcome to Our Town. I'm your host, Larry Frost, and today's special guest is Mayor Thatcher Keezer. So let's go start the interview. Thank you for your time, Mayor. Well, it's a pleasure. Thank you. What is it like to be Mayor of Amesbury? Well, for one, this has got to be one of the most fun jobs I've ever had in my life. Um, it, it's a job in which every day you walk in the door and you think you know what you're going to be doing that day, and something else comes in the door behind you and changes it all. Uh, so it, it's always exciting. It's, um, the, the way I've uh, described it, it's, it's like running in a marathon at a sprint pace and there are people throwing chairs out in front of you and you're jumping over them and dodging them. Uh, it, it's a challenge but uh, it's one of those jobs where you actually have an impact on people's lives, you have an impact on the way things uh, uh, happen in your community mm -hmm. and you can make a difference. So uh, whatever the challenges that are thrown at me it's, the, uh, it's having the ability to make a difference at the end of each day that makes it enjoyable. Is it? Do you like it better as a small town versus a bigger city, or is it easier for you that way? Well, I've, I, it's been my profession to work with mayors over the many years, mm -hmm. and so I've, I've had the opportunity to, to be with the big city mayors, uh, Mayor Menino in Boston, uh -huh. being the biggest in, in Massachusetts, <clears throat> and work with a lot of other communities. And I think Ames, one of the attractiveness of being mayor of Amesbury is a small enough community where it's, it's a community where people know each other. And you can walk down the street, down the sidewalk, mm -hmm. and you know everybody waves and smiles, and you know each other, and you have conversations along the way. Um, I think if it was uh, a much larger city, you know, you'd travel around, and, and you wouldn't have as much connection on an individual basis. Uh, and sometimes you have bigger challenges. And I, I would probably venture to say that the mayors of the big city would be satisfied staying with the Envious. big city. And, well, I think you know they'd say no. I like the, the you know the big city. It, it's um, you just it's your community. Mm -hmm. um, the challenges that you're working on for your community is is what you're there for, and so you accept what you have and and, and make the most of it. Now, my second question was, um, what do you enjoy most about being mayor? But you kind of answered that with that. Yeah. But do you want to add anything else? Well, I would add. It, it, if I was to focus on one thing, it's the people, mm -hmm. dealing with people. Um, I, I, this afternoon, I, uh, Congressman Tierney was visiting today, uh -huh. and we talked about that as we were walking down the street, that, that what I enjoy the most about being mayor is dealing with people and talking to people, and uh, I get to do it every time I go out the door. And so... Like uh, us. Thank that, you. That's right. <laughs> and, you know, I, I'm... I'm uh, I, I love having a conversation. I love uh, uh, exchanging ideas and, and and so forth. And this is a this is a people type business, and I, I really enjoy working with people. Oh, great. Are there any programs or projects being introduced that you are very excited about? Yeah, one of them I'm um, particularly excited about because I think not only is it to benefit Amesbury, but I, I'm hoping that it benefits municipal government throughout the state. And it's, uh, it's a management approach that, I, uh, that I've termed as AIMSTAT. And it's modeled on a program out of the city of Baltimore called CityStat. Uh, 
And uh, Mayor Joe Curtitoni out of Somerville is doing a similar program called Summer Step. It's all generically called STAT programs in which um, the basic uh, concept is uh, I have the division heads in my office on a bi-weekly basis and what we try to do is we try to generate data about um, the performance and activities that are going on uh, in the workings of government and, um, and having department heads report on it on a regular basis, uh, setting performance measures and tracking how we're doing towards whatever the goals are that we've set. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, it consists of sitting in this office, I have a PowerPoint presentation that uh, my chief of staff, Kendra Amaral, uh, puts together. And uh, we put the information up on the wall and with the, all the department heads from each division around the table. And it's going through such things as you know, personnel, how many people are available, how many, you know, how, how many are out. Uh, looking at the budgets on a bi-weekly basis, uh, looking at performance measures of, uh, you know, what are the number of uh, citations issued in, in, in the, the past period and why is this spike going up, why is this dropping down. And it's, it's an approach to better manage the organization, to have transparency throughout the organization as to what's going on, how well we're doing it. And it achieves two basic uh, goals for me. One is accountability. You know, the people voted me into office, to run the run the, the, the city uh, and to hold the, 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 the division heads and the departments accountable. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a way to measure how that productivity is going, but it's also for advocacy. It, it gives us the data and information to know what we're doing well and to keep doing it well. And secondly, where are the shortfalls and resources and, and, and so forth so that I can advocate for them and I can show the public that when we have a need for more resources in a particular area, we have the information, the data to back it up in order to gain that public support in order to get it. So it, it, again, it's, it's a management approach that's, um, I guess, uh, pretty much cutting edge for municipal government. Uh, we're pushing ahead for it. It's catching the interest of other municipalities oh, yeah. around the state. And hopefully it's, uh, it's the, way it, w the way municipalities do business in Massachusetts. It's kind of like a business flow chart organizational flow chart? Yeah, I mean, that's part of it. Um, it it's not one computer system. It, it's, it's an approach. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's looking at information, be it Gantt charts, be it just spreadsheets, uh, a, lot, a lot of charts and graphs. You know, pictures always tell a story better than just oh, yeah. words and yeah. numbers. And so it's through that information that those of us who are making decisions have uh, better means to make good decisions. I, I said it all along, you need to have good data to make good decisions. Oh, definitely. This is the mechanism in which we generate the data that tells us how things are going mm -hmm. in order to make decisions and provides us the feedback through the analysis that when we make a decision, we can see in short order whether it's we've made the right decision, the right decision it's making yeah. things better, yeah. or if we've made a wrong decision, it's making things worse, we know we need to, we need to adjust. And you could track it back with history too, right? Like yeah, we, yep. it's documenting uh, you know, the reports that are generated out of it, their PowerPoint reports, they're saved, and you know, the, oh, the previous report is used as the basis for the next report, and so it's allowing us to document our progress. So nobody can go back like in two months and say, I didn't say that, or that's what, not what was happening because it's documented. Yeah, or I said that because <laughs> I saw it on that chart. And I don't change my mind. Right. What are some of your favorite sites, places, or things you like about our town? Um, what we've been very successful at is uh, preserving the character of the, the, the former industries that made Amesbury uh, what it is throughout its history and, and converting it into modern use. Mm -hmm. And so our downtown... Uh, you know, with the restaurants and the specialty stores, uh, has it has a, a cachet that's happening, uh, that's attracting a lot of people to come in and visit. Um, the the style that that was uh, put in place, the brick and the and the, the the lamps and, and and you know the period pieces that give it the uh, the flavor from the, the 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 days of the mill the mill towns. Um, Old New England. Yes, very much old New England, old mill, yep. mill town New England, but done over, you know, in a way that, that that's very attractive. Uh, so I love being downtown and, and, and all that, but we also have gems around around town. We have Woodson Farm, which is, oh, yeah. I believe, the largest contiguous 
open space in at least Essex County, oh, wow. if not in a broader range. Uh, and there's a lot of activities that are done out at Woodson Farm, and, and just hiking, and, and, and a lot of people like to run their dogs That's out nice there. Hiking, yeah. uh, uh, soccer, we have soccer fields out there. We run a lot of festivals out mm -hmm. there. But we have uh, a number of lakes and, and, and streams in town um, that are you know, great for outdoor activity. Plus, we're right along uh, the southern border of the town is the Merrimack River. Yeah. Uh, so I grew up on the Merrimack River, and so a lot of boating activity and a lot of, a lot of outdoor activity. So we have a, a nice mix of um, character uh, locations, jewels around town uh, that we like to do. And, and, and they're speckled throughout as historical sites oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, throughout Ainsbury from, you know, from the revolutionary time and, and the Good point of history. Yes. I'm 16 something, I'm, I'm not sure when it was, but it goes yeah. back yeah. quite a way. Any helpful hints for a younger person still in school to help pursue a career in local politics? Yes, um, having gone through that myself, uh, uh, one is is you know if you're gonna if you're gonna be involved in, in say municipal government, uh, it's helpful to come in with a broad range of experiences in different things, because uh, you know the big part of of running municipal government is, is solving problems, mm -hmm. and you solve problems by grabbing ideas from other perspectives or, or other experiences uh, in your life and you, and you put them together in a different way to create a new, you know, a new outcome that, that, that solves problems. Uh, so for myself, you know, having experience with student government helps, learning uh, parliamentary procedures, Robert's Rules of Order, how to run an effective meeting, those are all sort of basic skills. Um, you know, having mathematical skills of just being able to do finances and doing analysis. And on the academic side, I mean, I, I think the, uh, the skill set that I rely on the most is my economics degree. Uh, understanding economics in the sense that, um, uh, you know, you can, you can do accounting, financial accounting, that you can add up the expenses and the revenues and, and come to, you know, a conclusion. Economics goes well beyond right, that yeah. of, the, the, the allocation of resources and, and the impact of scarcity or abundance of resources. It's a macro. Yeah, it, yeah. It, you know, it's, it's, a different, uh, it's a different perspective, and I, I find that uh, having that background is probably the, what I rely on most as far as... Well, you have uh, more to analog. draw from. Yeah. Like you said, you have more, more directions. When you are not the mayor or on duty with the U.S. Air Force, what do you like to do to relax or enjoy life? Uh, with what time I have, uh, <laughs> one I have, I have a three-year-old son and, and, and my wife, and we try to, uh, as crazy as our schedules are, try to spend as much time mm -hmm. together doing things uh, together. So I, my, my number one pleasure is uh, showing my son the world, and you know, watching him be amazed by things that we all take for granted, oh, yeah. uh, and and that's fun. Uh, beyond that, I. I well, I was playing ice hockey on a regular basis, uh, but in the last year and a half, my schedule has not allowed it. But I am still hopeful to get back on the ice. But your knees are okay too. My knees are great. I'm a <laughs> goaltender, uh, you know. So, as I said before, as a hockey goalie, uh, I know what it's like to be the last line of defense, and I know what it's like that every time you make a mistake, it's kept kept up on the board. On the People are keeping <laughs> score of it. Uh, and that's one of the prerequisites. But you to can be there. the hero too. That's right. It's a shutout. <laughs> that's right. But uh, you know, playing ice hockey. And one of the things I'm trying to uh, skill set I'm trying to develop is doing some woodworking. I have some projects around the house that I want to do, and uh, I'm going to try to develop those skills and and just use that as an outlet for for. Um, that can be very really relaxing. From what yes. people tell me, I, I don't do much woodwork, but it tells me if you take your time and figure something out and just go through yep. the motions. If you could give a special gift or plan to our town, what would it be? Well, I guess uh, I could answer in two ways. Um, one sort of in the physical, uh, and I assume you're referring to Amesbury itself. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, if I, uh, if I suddenly became Bill Gates and walked into town, and uh, what I would love to do is, is build a new city hall and, and you know, have a, a new facility that has all the modern smart technologies, efficiencies, and, and you know, zero environmental impact and all that. But architecturally, 
as it used to be, you know, in the turn of the century, in the 20s and the 30s, that it's a symbol of the stability in the, um, the seriousness of, of, of government in the sense of, of, you know, what we're here for. Mm -hmm. We're here to deliver services, but some of the fundamental services of providing, you know, education and public safety and, and, and public infrastructure, you know, serious stuff that, 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 that uh, we provide. And a building architect that, that reminds, you know, people of the serious business oh, of yeah, government. Yeah. You know, you look at the you look at the style of buildings built in the 1900, 1910s, 1920s. You know, the pillars and the and, and the granite, and you know, um, they were symbols of, of uh, respect and oh, their and, pride and, and workmanship. Right. Yeah. Right. So that would be one. But in another sense, uh, I I think what's important for a community is um, sort of a, a a spirit of cooperativeness, uh, a spirit of you know. As a community, we're all in this together, mm -hmm. and that that there are many challenges that are that are imposed on a community. You know, financial challenges and, and you know economic challenges, environmental and and you know all those things. And that uh, in order to meet those challenges, you know, we all need to be working together to to deal with those, to solve the problems, to move forward. Um, and so to have the ability of the whole community to come together, to disagree on things, to work it out, come to a consensus, and then agree. It can be the healthy consensus. to disagree as long as you can agree yeah, after you disagree. Yeah, that's how you get the best ideas. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, you know, Framesbury, we're, we're working, we're getting there. That, that uh, there is a spirit in town that, um, you know, people are really pulling together. And I'd point out one of the best examples was uh, last May we had the Mother's Day floods. In oh, yeah, yeah. which you know our entire downtown, we we were very close to having the the downtown buildings washed out, and we put the call out for help and volunteers, and, and it was amazing to see whole families oh, show up, just parents, in kids, yeah. filling sandbags and and doing all the things to help out, and that was a case where we were a we were a community in need, and people stepped up and came together and said, we're here. What do we need to do? That's why I first met you. I have to say it's it? embarrassing, okay. but I was holding up the yellow tape when they were bringing the stuff out of the restaurant. Okay. And, and you came out, and okay. you looked at me, I looked at you, and I, was, yeah. I didn't know who you were. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, okay, what did I do wrong? But that's the first time I saw you, and I was like holding up for everybody to go by, and I explained yeah, it to and, you. Yeah, and, and, and the like, restaurants and the other businesses needed to move their stuff out of harm's way, yeah. and everybody just showed up in droves and just started moving things. I, I didn't know what to do, but I figured I could at least help people go underneath yep. the thing and get through there and stuff. What would you like? the future residents of our town to know about our town in 2006 and 2007? Um, I think this is the start of the year of transition. And, you know, as I've talked about, uh, I'm trying to transition the way municipal government does its business and, 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 and do it in a different way um, so that financially uh, we can stay within the constraints. Uh, but still deliver superior municipal services. Mm -hmm. And um, some of the work that we're doing right now within the town hall is, is, is changing the fundamental way we, we do a lot of these things. And what will happen is that the results of that will start showing up six months, a year, two years, five years down the line when people look back and say, wow, we were able to achieve X because of the work that started back in 2006 right. and 2007 that we would have never had the capability to meet that challenge had we not done this. Oh, and great. so I think this is, this is the, the year of transition that, that uh, sets the stage for, for future success for the community. Oh, no, that's excellent. I want to thank you, Mayor, for your time. Thank you. Thank Harry, you very much. much.
Thank you.